Are you interested in serving with our new recovery ministry here at The Well? Your first step to begin serving here at The Well with recovery or any other ministry is to attend Well 101. Sunday, June 3rd, we'll begin our next session of Next Steps. If you have already completed Well 101, we will also be offering Learn Well and Live Well. Each Next Step class will last only three weeks and is held here at The Well on Sunday afternoons from two to four. For more information or to get signed up, please stop by our information kiosk. Hey Well family, our youth group is going to Camp Table Rock June 19th through the 23rd. We need your students' camp forms turned in by May 30th to get them registered. Be looking for forms coming home with your students on the Well Facebook or Instagram pages or at the information kiosk. common in this place this morning it's that we have a mom and regardless of what that relationship might look like uh, we want to say thank you to our moms today and so that is um, that video was made by a lot of the moms here in our church and some of our amazing kiddos here at the well and so I just want to say happy Mother's Day and uh, so excited that you are here with us today celebrating. What better way to celebrate Mom's Day than to be in the house of the Lord. And so we're excited to have you here with us this morning. This has been quite a mom week for me, to be totally honest with you. And I was thinking back last night and um, just kind of came to my mind. It's been almost 25 years ago that I sat in the Mexican villa at a booth across from a young man. He was 16 and I was 17. And it was our very first date. And uh, little did I know the adventure that the Lord would take us on over the next many years. Um, what, a, what a wonderful memory that was. And then I remember about 19 years ago, me and this same young man, who was now my husband, uh, we sat across from each other at the table at the Mexican Villa. <laughs> That's kind of our place. You either love it or you hate it, and we just love it. And so we sat there, and uh, we had just brought home our first child. His name was Caden from the hospital. And we literally were bringing him home. So we just thought, hey, we might as well stop and eat dinner before we get home. And so we sat there in the, in the same booth that we had sat in on our very first date. And he was in his little baby carrier, and he was just fine. He, he, Mexican Villa does happen to be one of his very favorite restaurants. And then last night, I sat in the booth across from my husband at the Mexican Villa after we had left his high school graduation. How does that happen? You know, I, we have so many young mamas here this morning and precious little babies, and it feels like it was just yesterday that we were bringing Caden home from the hospital and then to watch him graduate last night. And I know that you know what I mean. If, if you are a mom in my uh, stage of life, if you are a mom that's here with a little baby this morning, you think that it's going to pass so slowly and that it will never that day will never come but it comes so quickly and so we are in this series right now entitled rise up and when I think about that to rise up I don't think that there is probably any demographic in this room that understands that any better than our mamas because we rise up early and we go to bed late right we rise up in difficult situations and we rise up when times are tough and we rise up when someone has to clean the toilets or the vomit out of the floor right who's gonna rise up in those moments it's often it's often the women and the moms and so it's pretty easy to find something to talk to you about this morning um, when we're in this series on Mother's Day but that being said I want you to know while I hope to encourage our ladies today this is a message for all of us. This is a message for our young men and young women and our, our husbands and our dads, regardless of your age or gender. Uh, this is a message from the Lord today, and I pray that we will all be encouraged by it. Last week, Pastor Dylan preached an amazing message just honestly spoke to me so much in my own life. I would encourage you, if you didn't get a chance to listen to that, to listen. He kicked off our Rise Up series 
And the passage of scripture that we are using, kind of as our key passage, comes from Jeremiah. And it says this, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And here the Lord is speaking to his prophet Jeremiah. And Pastor Dylan did a, a fantastic job last week, kind of giving us the context and the story of, the, of Jeremiah's life. And so I'm not going to really go into that today. But um, this idea of being set apart. Pastor Dylan, he encouraged us that God has set us apart for his plan. But we must embrace the process. We must embrace the process. You know, many of us, man, we want to live the life that God has for us. We want to live out the calling that God has for us. But we do not want to embrace the process, right? Life is a process, and so we must embrace that. So I want to encourage you this morning uh, to listen to that message if you haven't already. But in order to embrace the process, right, <clears throat> in order to rise up and embrace that, we must be compelled to do so. We must be compelled to do so. And that word has become really significant in my life over the last few months, last several months. And so that's going to be the title of my sermon this morning. Compelled. Compelled. I've used that word so much lately that sometimes Pastor Dylan will say to me, you know, Selena, I'm feeling compelled because I just use that. You know, it's this, it's this feeling, this, this more than a feeling. It's, it's not like, you know, I want to do something or I think I should do something or I feel like I should do something. It's, man, I am compelled. And this idea of being compelled is to be pressed, to be forced, um, it's, to be, it's to be pushed on. Like this overwhelming sense of this is what God has called me to do and I must do it. I am compelled this morning. And so when I talk to you this morning and we focus in um, on our moms and what that looks like to be compelled in life, Man, I want to encourage you this morning that this is not about your opinion. This is not about your desire. This is about a call of God upon your life, whether you're a man or a woman, young or old. This idea that the spirit of the living God literally compels us to rise up. And what does that look like? So I want to read this morning from 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 19. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 19, and this is what it says about being compelled. You can't miss this. It says, for Christ's love compels us. Did you get that this morning? Christ's love compels us. We'll stop there for just a second. You see, too many times in life, I think especially as moms and women, we are compelled by guilt. We are compelled by shame. We are compelled by the almighty schedule. We are compelled by the clock. We are compelled by the expectations of others. And I want to encourage you in this place this morning as I am on this journey with you. I do not want to be a woman compelled by those things. But I want to be a woman of God. I want to be a mom. I want to be a follower of Christ who is compelled by Christ's love. To be compelled by nothing else but the love of Christ. And this is what it goes on to say. It says, for Christ's love compels us. And this is how. Because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore for all died. So we're convinced that, that Jesus Christ died and because he died, we all can die to our old self. It goes on to say, for those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them and was raised again. That we are to live for him who died for them. I want to encourage you this morning, so many times as moms, we're tempted to live for our kids. We're tempted to live uh, for our families, for, for, for the responsibilities that we have. And while those things are very important, hear my heart here, our kids are so very important. Did you know you are not called and compelled to live for your children? You should be called and compelled to live for Jesus Christ. Man, I'm telling you, you think, I, I, man, I just want to be the best mom I can be. Man, I'm just going to live for these kids. The best mom that you can be, the best example that you can be is to be a woman who is compelled by the love of Christ, and Christ gets your first. He gets your first. He gets your first. You're called to live for him. 
It goes on to say, so from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we no longer do. And we know that's because now he has risen from the dead. He goes on to say, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new is here. All this from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciled to the world, to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, that we might be the righteousness of God. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, that your word teaches us, Lord, of all the things in this life that compel us. As followers and believers of Christ, we are to be compelled by your love. Father, I pray that you would speak the truth of your word upon the hearts of every individual here. God, may I be your vessel. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So here would be my focus this morning. When you look at 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 19 that we just read, it says the focus would be Christ's love compels us to rise up through a life of conviction, compassion, and commitment. Christ's love compels us to rise up through a life of conviction, through a life of compassion, and through a life of commitment. I want you in this place this morning to understand the difference between what you want to do, what you feel like you should do, And literally what the Spirit of God is compelling you to do. You have to get to a point in your life, we all have to get to this point where we understand what it is to be compelled by the Spirit of God. And so first I want to look at for a minute what it is to be compelled by conviction. To be compelled by conviction. A conviction is a strong persuasion or belief. We live in a culture where conviction is a bad word, right? Well, don't tell me what I should be convicted of. Don't place conviction on me. We don't want to talk about conviction. I'm going to tell you something. I cannot place conviction on you. Did you know that? I cannot convict you of anything in your life. Only the power of the Holy Spirit can convict you. Only the power of the Holy Spirit can speak truth into your life. Man, I'm just a vessel. But here's what the Bible says about conviction. It's in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 15, it says, Because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for the one who was raised again. Is that your conviction? Are you convinced? A conviction means to be convinced of something. And this says that we are compelled by the love of Christ when we are convinced That we are to no longer live for ourselves, but we are to live for the one who gave his life for us. You know, so many times when we speak about convictions in the church, we think about there's this list of things we should do and things we shouldn't do. Do's and don'ts. But did you know that true conviction is always born out of love? Did you know that true conviction is always born out of love? It is not born out of a set of rules. And here's how we know this. In Romans 8, 38 through 39, it says this. Again, I am convinced. That means that you are convicted. I I believe that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Your convictions will compel you. Your convictions will compel you, and and what you live is what you believe. Are you compelled this morning by your convictions? I tell you, we, uh, we're getting ready for Caden's graduation party, right? 
And I, I've told you this before. I like things to be so-so. I just do, okay? And so we had gotten our yard in perfect condition because we knew that not everybody was going to fit in the house. It was just pretty much family coming over, but we have a big family. And so I was so ready. I had all my decorations up. And I got up yesterday morning, and those little tassel things that fall off of the oak trees had taken over my yard. Do you know what I'm talking about? I looked them up. They're called catkins. Catkins, that's what they're called. They didn't know they had a name. And so I got up yesterday morning, and I was convinced that something had to be done with all of this pollen and catkins in my yard. And so I, uh, about 5.30 yesterday morning as the sun was coming up, I was out there just spraying everything off and because, my, because our convictions impact our behavior. What we believe is how we will live. And so this morning, the Word of God says that we are to be compelled by our convictions and that convictions are born out of a place of love. The next thing I want to talk to you about this morning is that we are to be compelled by compassion. Compelled by compassion. You see, if we only live a life compelled by conviction, we could possibly get a little bit rigid. But sometimes we have to take compassion into account too. And so here's what compassion is. It's a sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with a desire to alleviate it. This idea that you want to be able to help people, that you want to alleviate their pain or their suffering, a life of compassion. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 17, that's the first passage we read. It goes back and it says this. This is how I know we are to be compelled by compassion. It says, so from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. Do you view people with compassion? Does compassion compel you? I talk, you know, I think this morning about being a mom. I remember the very first time that my kids came home, right, and somebody had picked on them at school. Oh, how dare somebody pick on my baby at school, right? We've all been there. It's happened. And, and, and as a mom, if I was compelled in my flesh, my first thing to do would be to call up their teacher, right? Call up this kid's parent and just tell them to stop picking on my kid. But did you know that was the most perfect opportunity for me as a mom to teach my child compassion? Because you know what? What that person did or said no, maybe that wasn't okay. Maybe they shouldn't have done it. But do you know what I know and what you know? Hurting people hurt people. You know that? Hurting people hurt people. And if there's a kid at school that's picking on my kid, chances are that kid needs some compassion in his or her life. Chances are they don't need to be told on and beat up. Chances are I need to send my kid back into the fire to take them some compassion, to love on them, and to include them. I'm telling you, parents, we got to teach our kids compassion. Life isn't fair. It's not always going to go your way. But I don't want to raise up a little brat who can't take any criticism or who can't take any whatever because it's coming, right? It's coming. And, man, we got to be compelled by compassion. we got to teach our kids to be compelled by, com by compassion. To be compelled by their convictions. To be compelled by their compassion. You know, we can set down a list of rules for our kids. But when it comes down to it, they are not going to be compelled by the rules. They may keep them for a season. It may impact them for a while. But what they will be compelled by is when, the, when Jesus Christ, they encounter his love and they have convictions of their own that are born out of this relationship with Jesus Christ. And then all of a sudden, their own lives are compelled by the convictions that, that the Lord has brought to them. And it's not about keeping a set of rules because we must be be compelled by conviction and compassion. And the next thing I want to talk to you this morning, it says that we must be compelled by commitment. To be compelled by commitment. Oh, again, such a bad word in our culture today. Man, don't ask me to commit to anything, right? I may be there, I may not. I may follow through, I may not. But this is what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21. It says, And he has committed to us the message 
of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He committed us to the message of of reconciliation. We are his ambassadors. I'm going to tell you something. An ambassador is pretty committed to what they're doing, right? Are you compelled by the love of Christ to be committed to his kingdom, to be committed to the calling he has placed upon your life, to be committed to the appointment that he has set you apart for? I remember being a mom with little babies and toddlers I remember I was a stay-at-home mom for about six years, and I just, John would come home from work, and I just would, I would just say, I just need you to take these babies for just a minute. They've just been hanging on me all day long, right? It's tough. It's hard. It's some of the hardest work, and, and then we have moms who go, and they work all day long. And then they have to come home, and they have to take care of the needs of their, of their children and their families. It is some of the hardest work you will ever do. But oh, that you would be compelled and committed to stay the course. Oh, that you would be compelled and committed by the love of Christ. And, 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 and because of the love you have for Christ and the love that he gives you for your children and your family, that you would be compelled to remain committed. How committed are you and how compelled are you by that commitment? I'm telling you right now, you want to know what you are committed to? Ask your kids. They will tell you in a moment what you're committed to. Would they say that you as a mom and as a dad are committed to the church? That you're committed to the Lord? That you're committed to reading the word of God? That you are committed? Or would that commitment fall somewhere else? Man, I want to be a woman of God who is compelled by my convictions, who is compelled by compassion, and who is compelled by commitment. In Proverbs 16, 3, it says, Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Commit your ways to the Lord, and your plans will be established. If I have learned anything over these last 25 years, entering into adulthood and marriage and kids and family, it is that we can trust the Lord, that we can commit to Him and, and trust Him to work things out. So, my question that I would have for you today is simply this. Are you compelled by the love of Christ to rise up? How is it that God's love is compelling you? What is it in your life? Let's be honest. That conviction, whatever that might be, that the Lord is calling you into something new. He, he's calling you to a different place. I remember as a young mom when the Lord convicted me and I could no longer watch E! News. Right? Right? And you say, what are you talking about, Selena? Listen, it, it was something that, that was, it was, it was a negative impact on me. It was, it was watching that and it was influencing my thoughts and my mind and the way I saw the world. I, I, don't know, I don't know how the Lord might be convicting you, what he might be speaking to you, but my prayer is that you would be compelled today. You would be compelled to live in that conviction. What about compassion? How is the Lord compelling you this morning to live a life of compassion. I'm telling you, it's pretty easy to, to hand a free meal to someone that we don't know, uh, to give a few dollars to some good cause. Real compassion is when you show love to those who will never show love to you. Real compassion is when you pray for those who, who, who just assume beat you up. When you teach your kids to, to love that person who's never going to love them in, ter in turn and, and to live a life compelled by that compassion. How, how is the Lord challenging you, compelling you this morning in your commitment 
whether that be to him or to your family or, or to the church, whatever that looks like this morning. This week, I got the opportunity to live one of my bucket list items, right? So I ministered in a community for 18 years. And in that community, um, I was a youth pastor. And so every year at the end of the school year, they would have a minister from the community who would come in and preach the baccalaureate service at the high school. And that was just something that I just always felt very compelled that, that I, I wanted to do, that I felt like I was supposed to do. And even though I had ministered there for 18 years and had been nominated many times by students to, to speak at the baccalaureate service, just because of situations and people's beliefs and thoughts and feelings, whatever that looked like, I just never had the opportunity to do that. And so this past year, my son came home and he said, Mama, he said, I nominated you to be our baccalaureate speaker. A lot of my friends nominated you. You're going to get to speak at baccalaureate. And I said, oh, son, I said, thank you. That's awesome. I said, but it's probably not going to happen. And I said, well, what do you mean, Mom? Why, I, well, of course it's going to happen. Why wouldn't it happen? And I didn't think it was going to happen. I was told it wasn't going to happen. And then, you know what the Lord does? When he opens a door that no man can shut, and he opened that door, and you might say, Selena, what's the big deal about speaking at a baccalaureate service? I had, about six, five or six years ago, I had marked a passage of scripture in my Bible and underlined it and highlighted it. And I wrote baccalaureate. Because I knew that God was going to give me that opportunity at some point in time. It just wasn't time yet. You know, last week when Pastor Dylan talked about Sometimes we feel like God has forsaken us. We feel like God has forgotten us. And I, I'm not, I was at this altar last Sunday, kind of having some of those thoughts. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> and, and, and then we got to understand he's preparing us. He's preparing us. And I just want to encourage you moms in this place and, and women and men. The Lord is preparing you. And, and these feelings that you have and, and the, he, he's compelling you, these things he's compelling you to do. Continue to live in your convictions. Continue to live this calling out by, by, by living a life that he has called you to live, a life of compassion and a life of commitment. And know that he is preparing the way for you in all of these things. I'm going to ask you for, to stand with me here in this place this morning. Man, that you would be men and women compelled by the love of God. That we would rise up, not out of competition, not out of shame or guilt or, 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 or comparison, but that we would rise up because the Lord Jesus Christ is compelling us through his great love to do so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this morning, and, and please don't feel like you have to do this, but I just want an opportunity this morning to pray over our ladies pray over our moms, and if, if the Lord would compel you to do so this morning, I'm just going to invite you as we sing this song to come and to kneel at these altars. Man, I just want to pray over you this morning if the Lord would compel you to do so. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to begin to sing, and I would just invite you to come this morning. Father, we love you. We praise you. Father, I thank you, God, that, that your love compels us. God, that your love is what everything else comes out of. And I just pray in this place this morning that we would be men and women of God who are compelled by the great love of God to rise up in our calling, to rise up in our appointment, to rise up in those things that you have set us apart to do. God, that we would be compelled by your great love. Father, I ask these things in your precious and holy name. I'm going to invite my moms, if you will, to just come this morning to kneel down at these altars and just let me pray over you this morning. I want you to come, if you will.
to you this morning, Lord, and I praise you and I thank you, God, for our moms. God, I thank you, Jesus, that they are being compelled by your great love. God, I thank you that they are being compelled this morning by your conviction and your compassion. God, that they are committed, Father, to you and to your church and to their families. And God, I pray that you would give them strength. God, I pray that you would give them favor. God, I pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment beyond themselves. God, I pray for every mom and every woman in this place. God, I pray for our young men, not our old men. I pray, Father, that you would just continue to, to, to compel each of us to rise up, Father. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I'm Dylan Robinson, one of the pastors here at The Well. Thank you so much for listening to this sermon. We hope the Lord spoke to you through it. If you have any questions about the message, your faith, or any way that we can pray for you, please visit the contact page of our website. We would love to meet you in person, so come and see us. Here at The Well, we believe all people can be found by the grace of God, filled by the power of the Holy Spirit, and free to love like Christ. Have a blessed week, and remember, you are loved by God.